All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a short video from the German army. Now this is called, I still haven't really figured out how to actually say this, but Bun, Bun, Bundeswehr, Bundeswehr? Yeah, let me know how I'm saying that. But this is some mountain units doing some sort of attack. Now, judging by the description, it seems like the German army has specific mountain units. So in the US Army, we do have like 10th Mountain Division, but I gotta say one of the brigades is in Fort Polk, Louisiana, which is basically like a humid swamp. And the other two brigades are in New York. So those are more like the mountain units, but still they don't really do like specific mountain training. So as far as like specific mountain units, we don't really have anything that's really designated for that. So you have some people that might go and do some training, but it's not like a for sure thing. So it seems like in the German army, it is like definitely a separate thing from like the normal light infantry and also paratroopers, but I'm not sure. Hopefully this video will shed some light on it. But real quick, if you guys haven't checked out the shorts channel, I do have a link in the video description that's been getting some traction recently, which is pretty encouraging because again, YouTube doesn't really like the gun content so much. So I try and keep it off of my main channel. So all that stuff usually goes on to the shorts channel. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, then you might want to check that out. Now also in the video description, I have a URL for ExpressVPN. So if you guys use that URL, you get three months free on top of a 12 month subscription. If you guys aren't familiar with VPN, definitely recommend checking them out because they're just a great tool to add some security, encrypt your data whenever you're connecting to different websites, and also get access to like different Netflix shows, even like different news articles. Yeah, it's it's a very good tool, and I recommend ExpressVPN because I've been using them for a couple years now. But yeah, let's check out this cool video about the Bundeswehr mountain units attacking something. <laughs> Mountain units are always really cool. Oh, also, this is English auto translate, so it might not be too accurate, but should be good enough. Oh, he's got the MP7 too. Damn, he's doing like proper rock climbing too. Oh, he's got a machine gun. Damn, okay. I didn't... Just climb a 60 meter high cliff. Oh, what the heck? I didn't even, I didn't realize it was freaking in English. <laughs> okay, well, th I mean, I guess that's proof enough that I don't really watch these videos before I actually record them. So this is already a lot cooler than what I was expecting. With other mountain units, we've seen them like traversing some pretty crazy stuff, but never like legit rock climbing like this, especially with all this this gear on. Now being in a mountain unit and getting some sort of familiarization in those regards is one thing, but for them to be doing stuff like this, it's almost like you, you need to have like a good passion for what you're doing as far as like knowing all the equipment that's associated with climbing, how to set up all these different rigs, especially if like there's nothing there previously. I imagine they probably learn a little bit about that. So it definitely goes beyond just normal conventional military training. You need to have a little bit of passion for sure in what you're doing, which I guess can be said with anything as far as like different infantry specialties. Assault unit one and two snipers take up position. Hell yeah. <laughs> the covering unit scales the wall on ropes. Damn, and you gotta be fit for sure. Machine gun, RPG, grenade rifle, and ammunition add up to 30 kilos to an individual's kit. Yeah, easily. To approach the enemy unseen, safely and fast in difficult terrain is phase one in a mountain attack hmm. and one of the specialist skills of the mountain infantry soldier. This we is await sick. the 231st Mountain Infantry Battalion from Bad Reichenhall in Bavaria. In a quarry, the soldiers demonstrate their skills. We are the covering unit, so we provide fire support for the whole platoon. Holy cow, so they traverse that? That is like... I don't know, that must be like 100, maybe 130 feet up, maybe 150 feet up. Oh yeah, oh man, that is freaking, okay, never mind, that is freaking tall. That might be like 200 feet up. That's pretty freaking insane for them to traverse that entire thing. I'm sure this is like a training area, so they didn't actually have to set it up, but you can see these guys chilling down here. I imagine this is like a pretty, you know, standard training area for them, but... It looks like a lot of fun. So they're the cover unit. 
Again, I'm not really too specialized in Mountain Warfare. I was part of 10th Mountain Division, but we didn't do anything like this. In 10th Mountain Division, I did more subterranean combat training than actual mountain training. So seeing all this is very, very new to me. So of course, if you guys have any information or knowledge to add, please throw it down below so we can learn a little bit more about what's going on. I'd fire support for the whole platoon. We are deployed higher up, and our orders are to force the enemy to take cover so that the assault units, we have two, can attack while the enemy is occupied. Are they attacking this is from the mission. mountain? We hold position in the same place in the quarry, but it's all downhill in phase two of the attack. That's because sick. one of the basic principles in mountain warfare is to attack from top to bottom. The command to attack is given. Okay. Oh, no kidding, they're literally attacking from the mountain. Okay, this seems really difficult for me. I'm trying to think of a time where you could realistically use this particular sort of ambush skill. So having the cover unit is very necessary, especially since these guys are very exposed, they probably can't really engage from this sort of position. But I don't know what they would be attacking where I mean, honestly, it just seems like it would be a lot of work to get these guys on the ground. I'm not sure how long it would actually take. Maybe like you could do it in 20 seconds or maybe a little bit less. But yeah, I want to see how they could actually use this in an actual sort of ambush scenario. I guess if there's people going through a tunnel, that's one thing, but that looks like so much fun. Yeah, because now they're just on the ground. By quickly abseiling down the steep walls, the soldiers break into the enemy position one after the other. Okay, so this is more of like an offensive sort of tactic. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. I apologize if I'm pausing it too much. But okay, so I guess it makes sense for sure. But it, it kind of threw me off how they were climbing up and then sort of shooting from there. I imagine they are practicing as if they're traversing rough terrain and then they're sort of looking into like this divot or this defilade and they're about to attack downward. So that makes a lot more sense now that I'm thinking about it uh, on the offensive side of things. One after the other. One soldier is wounded. A comrade comes to the rescue and abseils down with him. That sounds the like a bitch. Man will be cared for after the descent. Huh. The wounded soldier is taken to the rear on a Hagland. This two-piece, highly maneuverable tracked vehicle is particularly hmm. well suited to the difficult mountain terrain. Those things are clutch, man. All the militaries have them except us. Even with <laughs> today's advanced technology. Pack animals are essential in the mountains. Hell yeah. On narrow, steep paths, they can carry... What the f... Oh my god, was that a... F like a... What is that? A base plate? Like a mortar base plate? For like a 120 maybe? I don't know, that thing just looks freaking massive. I can't imagine a soldier having to carry that thing for... For very long. <laughs> on narrow, steep paths, they can Jeez. carry up to 150 kilograms. And are an important means of transportation for the mountain infantry. No kidding. Good stuff. <laughs> All this advanced tech and you still need them. That's pretty funny to think about. Yeah, it looks like it was a whether base plate. Whether in extreme terrain or under extreme weather and climatic conditions, thanks to their wide range of skills, the mountain infantry can be deployed across the globe. <laughs> Man, that looks like fun. If you had a fear of heights going into this unit, you're definitely going to lose that. Kinda have to. But it looks like they're just doing standard like repelling. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. This is like, I know a little bit about sort of repelling in these sorts of setups because I was a helicopter insert and extract like r repel and fast rope master. So I set up all those stations and all those rigs to actually do some repels and fast ropes and spy rigging and whatnot. So I'm pretty familiar with that. Even like the tower aspect of just doing like repels down the wall. I'm pretty comfortable with that and the equipment. But this is kind of interesting because I've seen the Israelis have some pretty solid kits when it comes to like urban repelling. But this is different. This is more mountaineering stuff. But I feel like they could learn from each other as well because 
it seems like here they're still using a pretty standard sort of repel setup. I imagine they just have a, like a descender and they're just, you know, doing the standard braking, but there's a lot of really cool like gadgets you can get that make it a lot easier. The Israelis just have this thing where if you squeezed it a little bit, you would repel. If you squeeze it really hard, you would break. Or if you let go, you could break as well if you needed to engage with a weapon. So if you guys, if these guys got something like that, that would be really sick. Even I have something like it's um it's called a, a Petzl Evac, but basically it's just like a little lever. So really you can go hands free once you let go of that lever. So that's just another awesome thing. If you have to repel like this, you are focused on breaking. And if you let go with this hand, you'll be okay, but you still need to break. You need to be able to actually like tie off for you to actually stop. So I'm not sure if that's more like advanced stuff or if that's just like what like the specific units have when they get to better training. But you can definitely learn a lot doing some some cross training like that. Even having like a rope bag on your leg is a great thing. So you're not throwing this rope down. Of course, when people start opening fire, it loses the element of surprise. But having a rope bag attached to your leg or your ankle is a great thing. So you're not having to throw this rope down and people are just seeing this rope fall like 200 feet or what have you. I really, really wanna know what you guys think about this. If you guys have any experience with this particular training or just mountain training in general, and I was just kind of talking out of my ass with certain stuff, definitely let me know down in the comment section because again, I like doing these sorts of videos so we can get more exposure to different stuff and different tactics, different equipment, and just try and learn about it and try and compare it to other stuff that we've seen previously. But this was a very, very cool recommendation. I got another recommendation for this particular mountain unit, I think, so I might try and check that out. But if you guys have any recommendations for any other sorts of mountain units, please throw it down below. We've seen a lot of people do some really solid stuff, like the Royal Marine mountain leaders are really solid. We can see these guys are solid. We've seen like, you know, the Indian army is really solid with mountain stuff as well. So it's always really cool to sort of see all these different aspects and even just the different terrain is pretty mind boggling sometimes, especially when you add like the Arctic environment to this. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I definitely thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to check out. Now, if you guys follow my shorts channel or my Instagram, you might see me doing some repels from time to time. I do like to do more of the urban stuff, but that's kind of hard to find like a good urban setup. But I'll do stuff like this where I'm just rappelling down like rock and whatnot. But having to like add like guns and stuff to it just makes it a lot more fun. So I'll try and do some more of that in the future if you guys want to see that. But of course, if you have anything else to add, please throw it down below. But that is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.